class. Hello YouTube, I'm Trader Rick from Swing Trade from Scratch bringing you this week's outlook and recap video for swing trading. In the video I'm going to talk to you about some of my favorite stocks for swing trading and recap some of the ones that I closed out while touching on what's going on in the overall market to give you a sense of how I'm trading to help you get ideas for how you can trade. This week we did see a nice oversold rebound and I did mentioned some picks last week that I was looking at that helped me take advantage of that rally but that being said I did stop out on some of the ongoing trades that I had on so let's find out what I'm looking at for this week and where I'm coming from off of last week my favorite new stock that I want to trade next week is Caesars Entertainment CZR and this is an event driven technical play if you want to learn my strategies, you can check me out on perfectyourtrading.com. I have a swing trading course that focuses on the strategies and the practice. And if you're somebody who's newer to trading, you can check out my foundations and basics course as well. The reason I like CZR for a swing trade is because it gives me a chance to either continue to play this rebound move in the overall market, or if it reverses and returns to weakness, I can play it that way as well. So this is the key level here around 4291. If you look back here at May, this 43 was a, a decent area of support. We saw it break above that on Friday after failing a couple of different times to move above it in the recent past. So with that market strength, if it does continue to be a good favorable environment for longs, and it shows support here at 4290 to 43 then I'd look to go long back up to 4650 5225 and even 54 depending on how long that strong market remains and on the other side if this level breaks down and we see selling pressure resume then I can go short back down to 39 and 37 so it's kind of fitting to have a sports bettors mentality of playing the over and under here because that is one of the potential positive catalysts that I see for Caesars Entertainment. The sports wagering, there's revenue growth, the bookings are up, the place is filled from all accounts. So all of that outside of this technical event sh could be positive momentum for Caesars Entertainment. Amazon.com is a stock that I think is worth watching. I did mention it last week as a potential long candidate in a better market. Unfortunately, I missed the pullback to near my entry zone that we had on Tuesday, and the stock was green every day this week and reached that first price target that I had identified. So where we're at now, if this can pull back and show some support around 114, then I could potentially take it and go long up to 125 and drop my stop right around 112 or so to give me that positive reward to risk ratio that I look for in trading and that's also in the course if you want to take it but the strategy here though is event driven and that event is the prime day that Amazon features every year in the past this has been a positive catalyst for the stock and I understand that we're in a different market environment right now but the recent stock split does make it more affordable for retail, or retail traders, so this could be a potential positive catalyst to propel the stock higher. Obviously, the overall market is important, and as long as it remains favorable, this play can work in my view. So remember, I use the fundamentals to decide whether I'm long or short on a stock, and the technicals to plan and time the trade. And that is exactly what's going on here with Amazon.com. So hopefully it makes a nice little run up into Prime Day like it has in years past and trots its way towards the end zone like a Deion Sanders return touchdown to that price target at 125.80 and maybe even to fill this gap higher. But that will be determined based on the price action over the next couple of weeks. I want to quickly mention Sanderson Farms Inc. S-A-F-M. Last week this was a candidate that I liked for a short if it rejected its recent high at 210.22 well you can see it had a pretty strong week moving above that it even had some weird news related to its merger or acquisition I should say news that was put out in error and the stock continued higher 
So I never traded this one. It was kind of a bad pick. Uh, so no trade. We're moving it from my list. This week I'll also be paying a lot of attention to the inflation data that comes out. Obviously if we see inflation cooling that could be a bullish sign for stocks. And if we see it remaining hot or coming in higher than expected, then that, in my opinion, would be bearish for stocks because it'll dictate a more aggressive hawkish Fed. And higher rates could be harmful to the market. Also, the other thing I'm looking for is related to growth. And if companies start cutting their forecasts and analysts start slashing their estimates to reflect a reduction or a reduced outlook for growth, that would obviously be bad for stocks as well. So that could be a potential negative catalyst to take off this recent rally. So if we look at the recap, we see the S&P having a strong week, finishing a lot higher, especially on Friday. 390 will be an important area next week, along with those kind of macro headlines that I just discussed. And then if we look at the NASDAQ 100, essentially, uh, we see a similar move. Four green days and a big move on Friday. Looks to be trading above a key level around 294.50. Um, and then you see the next higher resistance up there, major resistance, I should say. So that's kind of what we're looking at there. And then Costco, COST, was a new trade that I put on last week. I mentioned a number of different ways to trade this based on what was going on with the market. But once it reclaimed 460 and things appeared strong, I decided to go long. And I was looking for a price target up to 485. And we came ever so close, about an Arizona iced tea away from the price target here. But this did turn out to be a good pick to capture this rebound move for stocks this week. And then another stock that I had worth watching was Centilioni. Not sure if I'm saying that right, but this is a cybersecurity company. Kind of a timely industry to focus on. And I did go along this week as the stock pulled back at the beginning of Chairman Powell's testimony on Wednesday. After making a pretty good move, a uh, longer wick, but a pretty good move nonetheless on Tuesday. Did get that pullback to that 23 entry zone I was looking for. Went long off of that. Already reached that first price target at 26 on Friday, allowing me to put a line through that ticker S for a gain of $3 per share. And then I'm holding out the rest of the position, looking for 27.25 to allow me to go ahead and put that second line through that S to make that thick money sign that we look for. Now to recap. IBM I closed out this week I uh, stopped out on green kind of like a bad driver but a better trader and preserve my gains for a net winner here of 376 a share with a return on investment of 2.6 percent so I moved my stop loss down from that initial one up here near the high of 144.73 from the middle of this year and move that down to 142. So with the gap up in strength on Friday within IBM and within most stocks, it was time to cut this one off. So closed out there 40% at 142. And then previously I had taken profit at 138.20, 136.50, and 133. All 20% taken off at those levels. I was holding out for 128.50, 125.75. But with that oversold rebound that we had this week, it didn't work out all the way. So a small winner here on IBM. And then let's conclude by taking a look at Spotify here, ticker SPOT. This week, in response to the stock surge, I had to announce that I'm pulling my catalog of short shares out of Spotify following Neil Young and Joni Mitchell. But no, seriously, in other words, I stopped out at 104 for a loss of 450 a share and I was wrong on this one I thought with the more hawkish Fed the hotter inflation data coming in that tech would face even more pressure and I thought a lot of stocks including Spotify would go back and test recent lows like at this $89 level so I identified 100 as the key level 
and when it broke below that, I thought that we would see a test of that $89 level. So I went short on that, and then with that oversold rebound this week, I ended up stopping out right there. So that one didn't work out so well, I was wrong on that one. But let's hope I'm right about Caesars and get a chance on Amazon, and then we can go from there. So thank you for watching, thank you for your support of me and of the channel. And if you did make it all the way to the end, this far in the video, you definitely need to get on my free email list so you can get my swing trading watch list and newsletter sent to you every Sunday to keep you up to date and informed on what I think is going on in the market and what are the stocks that I'm looking at with those full trading plans so you can get an idea of how I trade and to learn from me. All right, so long, everybody.